Let's talk about history. We tend to think of cities as relatively modern, but cities have been around for uh, well over 5,000 years, and we basically organized ourselves the same way for a very, very long time, often near water, uh, often with some sort of barrier or moat between the city uh, and the surroundings. And what we've learned now is that, and I think Singapore is probably the best example in the world, actually, is that density always increases productivity. And, and we know that in modern times because of places like Singapore, like New York City. But what we didn't know until now was that historically it was the same case. And they built cities and then they infilled and added density and they became much more productive as people as a result. So let's talk about what the streets looked like before the automobile became the primary mode of transportation in many places. And, and now I understand here in uh, Singapore, two thirds of people take transit every day. So that's a wonderful thing. Um, and I know that you've set goals to make it even higher. We can get there. You know, we talk about congestion, at least in many places. I, I don't know about here, but in most places in the world, we talk about congestion as being a bad thing. And in the old days, congestion was a really good thing. Because you knew, like H. Hirschberg and company over there, you knew that they were going to be busy. I'm not sure if this works. This is a uh, clothing store. Again, you don't need to be super educated to understand that business is doing well. We shared public spaces in the past because we lived in very tight quarters, like many Singaporeans, which we've gotten away from in the United States. Um, we took trolleys to work, trams. Uh, here in Singapore, we used, um, uh, not rickshaws, these are called trishaws, I think, once you have, have the bike in front. That, yeah, that may have, may have been a rickshaw. Um, then we had trolley buses, then the automobiles were introduced. Um, but this was a very multimodal society. People walked, biked, and took transit. Um, and bikes were actually a very prevalent form of transportation, as I've learned, um, and how many people got around in olden times, if you will. Now then we decided that we were gonna take public space and use it for parking. So it's been fascinating for me to learn about where parking came from. Parking actually came from the United States, from Washington DC in the 1880s. And what parking was for was for creating park space in Grand Boulevards. And over time, as people got different types of vehicles, they started sticking their vehicles between the trees. And that's how parking came to be. But it's not necessarily a given that we should be leaving our cars as a storage in the public right of way. Um, but it just happened naturally as we had more and more vehicles sitting idle waiting for passengers. Um, I also, I love this picture. I can't pronounce it, is this Bougie Street? Okay, thank you. So there were many other uses for streets and this, in this uh, case, the street was used every night for all types of fun activities and, you know, drinking and eating and shows and so on and so forth. Um, so it's, it shouldn't be a given that cars are, uh, are to be the dominant force on the streets. 